This is Jonathan Sines again with you from Texas Values. And we're here at the Capitol talking with Representative Jeff Leach from the Plano area. And it's not just Plano where your district is. I mean, you've also got Allen and some other communities, but a very important area of North Texas. This was your first session. Uh, it's always important people expect great conservative leadership from that area. So just some general thoughts about how things went for your first session. Sure. Well, you're right. I, I represent District 67, which um, is Collin County, comprises uh, parts of the cities of Allen, Plano, Richardson, and a little portion of Dallas. And, and you're right. It's one of the most conservative areas in the state of Texas. And um, has, has historically, that area has produced very conservative legislators. And I think we had a very good session. Uh, we got a lot of things done for the future of Texas. Um, we, we killed a lot of bad bills that threatened um, freedom and liberty and threatened the family. And so I felt like, by and large, we had a, a very good, productive session for the people of Texas. Uh, we, we still have a lot left to do. Um, there's always um, unfinished work to do. And so, in a part, we're thankful for the work we did, but we're also looking forward to the, uh, to the work we still have to do. Well, I'll tell you, one of the issues uh, our group, Texas Values, was very interested in and enjoyed the opportunity to work with you on was the Texas Parental Control Accountability Act. This was a big piece of legislation, very important piece of legislation. So interesting, you as a freshman uh, being ready to mix it up on an issue like sex education. Well, I, I tell you, it wasn't just a, a sex education bill. I mean, it did deal with sex ed in the um, in the public schools, but really, it was a pro-life bill. It, it um, currently in public schools across the state. Um, there are um, things being taught to our kids with respect to abortion that we don't believe should be taught. And so it was an issue that, that I and my staff and many of my colleagues in the House and the Senate were very passionate about from before the session even started. And so um, thank, we're thankful for you and your organization and other conservative pro-family, pro-faith, pro-life organizations across the state that came alongside of us. Unfortunately, um, the bill died in the Calendars Committee, but we made substantial progress. We shined a light in what I believe to be a very dark place. Uh, we, we have an interest in what is taught to our kids in our public schools. And when there's um, information that um, promoting abortion and when the abortion industry is able to, in a sense, use our public schools as a marketplace for their industry, we have great concerns about that. And so we courageously step forward and shine a light on the issue. And uh, we'll bring it up again next session until we um, outlaw the teaching of abortion in our public schools. Absolutely. Well, you teamed up with uh, Ken Paxton from the Senate on this issue. And so... Uh, Close to, um, I think that his district encompasses part That's of your right. house district as well. So great to see that leadership, pro-life leadership, family values leadership from the North Texas area that many people come to expect. And I do agree with you, this issue that is something we'll see come up again and people are going to care about more as we see more encroachment on parental rights and family sure. values in the public school. But really some very impressive, so to speak, uh, hearings in the House and in the Senate that pulled the curtain back on a lot of these issues. So. Looking at what happened there, I'm very excited about the opportunity for more people to be engaged and be informed about some of the very dangerous and disturbing things that people are trying to push into the public school. Right. So we're thankful for your leadership on that issue. Well, I'll tell you, Jonathan, we um, as well on our side are thankful for, for Texas Values and uh, for other organizations just like yours. You know, when, when uh, the grassroots across Texas, uh, when, when um, pro-faith, pro-family, pro-life citizens are awakened to an issue, it's a force like none other in the state capitol. Um, we were flooded with calls and emails encouraging, uh, supporting our efforts. We had, as you know, um, many, many people from all across the state come and testify in the committee, helped us uh, move the legislation along. And it's natural, it's normal for, for uh, big bills like this to take more than one session to pass. And so we're going to be expecting I and mean, anticipating great engagement from you and your organization and the grassroots across Texas in the next session as well. Absolutely. Well, this issue, as has always been, will continue to be one of the top priorities for Texas values to help in. Another issue that you uh, showed leadership on, along with some of your other freshman colleagues, is the Boy Scout issue. Right. Now, not that it was a legislative issue per se, but legislators decided we wanted to have, you wanted to have your voices heard for your constituents because there was a lot of focus on Texas because the meetings were happening in the state of Texas, sure. in the North Texas area. So you were a member of a, a group of freshmen, brave freshmen, that first got out there and said, Let's put this letter together. Sure. Let's stand strong for our constituents and for the Boy Scouts. And so, how did that all come about? Well, you know, I, I, I look at the, the Boy Scouts issue, and it's unfortunate it ended the way it did, but I look at that as just a symptom of, of what is really a larger problem. I mean, the, the, the church, the, the family, the traditional family structure, faith, is under attack in, in, across the world, in the United States, and even here in Texas. 
And the Boy Scout issue is just a perfect example of, of how that plays out. And so we do, you're right, we as legislators have a voice, we have a platform, uh, we've been given, we've been entrusted with um, our constituents' trust to come down here and advocate on their behalf in Austin. And, and we felt like that was an issue that we could speak out on and we, we did, felt like we did make a difference. Unfortunately, the, the leadership of the Boy Scouts caved to immense political pressure from the other side. And so um, this should be an example of how we have to continue to fight, we have to continue to push back, we have to continue to have the courage to take That's a right. stance, to take a stance for righteousness, to take a stance that may be unpopular with some, but to stand for righteousness and for the right thing. I've always said, I say to my staff and to other legislators as well, and to myself, it's always right to do right. That's right. And um, the Boy Scouts issue was just wow. um, an example of Perfect that. Perfect example of that, as a matter of fact. And so you had a handful of state legislators, maybe a few more, that started this effort to put this letter together to support the Boy Scouts for their moral policy. It ended up being over 60 elected officials right. from across the state of Texas joined onto that letter. In addition, I don't know if you saw this uh, towards the end, even U.S. Senator Ted Cruz I did put his that. name on uh, supporting the Boy Scouts and um, being there to support them in a very important moment. So we'll see what happens with that uh, organization moving forward. Right. Well, and we've got to end on a positive note. Of right, absolutely. Let's talk about religious liberty. Okay. One of the bills that did pass this session that we're very excited about is the Merry Christmas bill. And as you know, in the Plano area, this issue about whether you can have red absolutely. and green plates and celebrate Christmas in public schools has been a very very important issue and has been the subject of litigation. So sure. we're thankful for your support on that issue. Well, I'll tell you, it was a good bill. My good friend, Representative Bohat, carried the bill, and um, I was proud to support him in that. And, uh, you know, th again, the Merry Christmas bill is another example of how religious liberty, our faith, our freedoms are under attack. And it's not just a, a Christian issue. I mean, this is a religious liberty issue that That's goes right. across the spectrum. And it's our job as publicly elected officials to stand up not only for uh, what we believe to be our, our world view, and, but to also stand up for the Constitution That's right. um, and our, our fundamental rights guaranteed in the Constitution, which includes, um, at, most importantly, religious liberty and our um, liberty and the freedom to practice what we believe. And so uh, there was, that was a no-brainer for me and the other legislators, and we were proud to see its passage and proud to see the governor sign it into law. Well, and, you know, as a attorney yourself, you understand how this works on the litigation side. You also understand how this works public policy-wise, the sure. message that it sends. Even though we've had court cases that have been very clear that school districts have the freedom and students have these type of freedoms to celebrate something that's a federal holiday being Christmas, uh, having it in state law is an additional reminder, reminder excuse me, of how to do things the right way right. in public school. Yeah, that's exactly and so, right. As we like to say, that we're, we hope that less schools are naughty and more nice. On well, this th that's issue. a great point. And I've, I've always said, I think you were the first one I heard say this, is that our, our kids, my kids, do not check their First Amendment freedoms when they walk into the, the doors of our public schools. Yeah. You don't have to check your First Amendment freedoms at the door. You don't have to check your faith at the door. Yeah. Um, in fact, you can bring it in with you freely. That's what's guaranteed yeah. to us in the Constitution. And so I I am proud to stand for those things, and I will continue to do so for as long as I get the opportunity to serve here in the Texas House. Excellent. So, well, we're thankful for your leadership. Thank you, Jonathan. So we're glad to have a little bit of time to visit with Representative Jeff Leach from the Plano area, and so look for more things to come from a, a rising leader in the state of Texas. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you.